Hello everyone. Now you will hear a brief retelling of the movie LX2048. Enjoy the movie. The big heat up is a natural calamity that occurs in the near future that makes the sun so hot that people have to stay inside to prevent dying from burns. These days, no one ever really sees one another in person since they spend their days linked to virtual reality. In order to obtain vitamin D and prevent mental health issues brought on by their imprisonment, they also take a medication called Lithium X. Clones are the only humans who continue to go out. They have been altered to withstand extreme temperatures and do necessary tasks like seeing the doctor. But Adam is the only normal human who still works in person since he detests clones and how much others rely on technology. With the exception of the cleaning woman, he is the only one in the workplace. He drives through the deserted streets while dressed in a hazmat suit. Wearing a VR set, he works from vacant desks and abandoned seats. Adam frequently has mood swings since he never takes lithium X. Adam learns one day that he has a deadly illness from a clone doctor. A heart donor is the only thing that can save him, but these days, unexpected or natural deaths are uncommon. Adam says he has a premium 3 insurance plan that should provide him with a healthy copy of his heart. However, clones are only made to replace a deceased individual. The heart may be the subject of a special request, but only if his wife signs on. Although they haven't been together for a time, they chose not to file for divorce in order to protect the kids. When the doctor sees that Adam is not handling this news well, she refers him to a psychiatrist because of his poor mental state. Adam begs to visit his wife in person later at home when they speak via the virtual reality set, but she refuses and doesn't change her mind even when he confesses he is dying. Adam gets to work the following day and gets into a heated dispute with his co-workers. His co-workers disregard his worries despite the fact that his firm manufactures VR headsets, which may soon become outdated due to implant chips. Adam visits the psychiatrist after work, but not before a guard checks his entire body, including his fingerprint and iris, for weapons. Since the doctor is also a clone, Adam acknowledges that he believes clones aren't actual individuals since they lack the same feelings and mortality anxiety. He believes that clones are only more computers that have been programmed to think and behave in certain ways. Adam remembers the night he and his wife broke up when he confides in the doctor about his thoughts. He intended to spend some time with his family when he got home from work, but they were all engrossed in virtual reality. The eldest child was playing computer games, the middle child was playing virtual tennis, the smallest child wore a headset even during mealtimes, and his wife was virtually tanning on a beach. Adam used a dull and inappropriate software to release himself because he needed some real human consolation. When his wife Rena realized he regularly locked the door after she unintentionally stepped on him, she became alarmed. After a fight broke out, Adam attempted to clarify that he didn't cheat since he didn't communicate with a human, instead, he utilized software because he wanted support from someone. Rena, however, was still very offended, pointing out that she had stopped their relationship and had only been in the VR for a limited amount of time to be with her kids. The kids weren't used to the thought of anyone leaving the house, so it was difficult to convey to them that dad would be living someplace else. Returning to the present, Adam used his laser tools to groom himself after waking up from unpleasant dreams about his breakup. When he makes the decision to go see his family, Rena first objects, saying that he should be under a restraining order. However, she gives in when he threatens to smash through the door. Adam brings up the fact that his firm is on the verge of bankruptcy due to the chip, but Rena doesn't care if he dies and wants Premium 3 to replace him with a clone so the family can still be taken care of. This implies that he could lose his work and insurance, meaning that his family won't have a clone to care for them after his passing. Rena continues to decline Adam's plea for heart and advises him to take Lithium X to keep his mind clear so he can come up with a plan for his family's future. The following day, Adam mentions chip technology while making many calls in an attempt to locate a man he believes to be Donald Stein. Subsequently, he establishes a virtual world connection to have a conversation with Maria, his software girlfriend, through chat. Even though he is aware that she is designed to comfort him, she nonetheless makes him feel better. Adam is about to be ruined by someone breaking into his house, it's Donald, and he's holding a pistol at him. In response to his question about how Adam learned about him and the chip, Adam says he believes Donald invented chip technology and asks him to assist him in rescuing his business. Adam then tells the tale of the insurance contract. The insurance clerk had informed them about the Premium 3 insurance plan, which was created by Donald Stein, an engineer. The clerk added that in the event of a death, the insurance would build a clone and the widow or widower may edit it to remove any imperfections. Adam was wounded when he realized his wife enjoyed it and detested the concept since he loved her exactly as she was. After a fight, Rena vowed that she just wanted Adam to reach his full potential. Returning to the present, Adam reveals that he surmised Donald to be the creator of the chips because it was he who devised the method of cloning, and only a device like to the chip could produce clones immune to sunlight. He acknowledges that he discovered Donald via his dental records as well. Donald accepts a drink and says he invented human cloning not because he enjoyed the notion but rather because his corporation needed a way to combat the major heat up after confirming Adam isn't a spy from his previous employer. 
In addition, Adam admits to drinking and says he wants to be loved exactly the way he is and detests the thought of changing anything about himself. Donald can identify with that sentiment. He claims that his virtual lover is the only person he has ever truly loved, which is why his employer dismissed him. Adam tells Donald about his breakup as a result, and Donald remarks that since Adam never has physical pain, his condition is emotional rather than physiological because he doesn't take lithium X. Adam accepts Donald's offer to make a clone that would resemble Maria because it is clear that he longs for love. Adam realizes he forgot the gun after Donald departs, so he stores it in a drawer along with all of his medications. He continues to think about Maria while drinking and struggling to play the guitar. When Adam sees his mother in virtual reality the next morning, she's wearing a new, youthful-looking avatar, which makes Adam nervous. This is taking up so much of his attention that he doesn't realize until it's too late that the sun is scorching his arm through his window. He quickly draws the curtains, puts some cream on the burn, and then decides not to go to work as he's not feeling well. A little while later, a call from a co-worker wakes him asleep. Adam hastily hangs up, flipping off the man, ignoring his concern. Then, as he continues to look at the medication and the pistol, he makes the decision to drink. Rena visits him in the evening with some exciting news. She can activate Premium 3 without Adam passing away. The procedure, known as virtual assassination, comprises a hacker fabricating the required documentation to lead the system to believe Adam has passed away. In two days, Adam's clone will arrive and take over the company's work, giving Adam a new identity and the freedom to pursue his interests without worrying about supporting a family. After a heated disagreement between the two of them, Adam understands how much his wife despises him and that his children deserve a suitable father, so he gives in to her plan. Rena is obviously thrilled at the prospect of taking his place. Rena tells him she's already begun the process and that his company believes he overdosed as she gives him a kiss of gratitude. Adam becomes anxious since he had hoped to bid the kids farewell, but Rena just hands him his new identity and login information before heading out. Adam chases after Rena to insult her as soon as he discovers he can no longer see Maria. Rena turns to taunt him back on the street, but before she can do anything, a vehicle strikes her, instantly murdering her. When the paramedics and police finally show up, Adam's fingerprint verifies to the officer that he is still alive. The officer tells Adam that the insurance would send a better Rena shortly, but Adam finds the joke offensive and starts crying because he thinks about his children. Adam tries to access his account later, but his password has already been altered. Then, in an attempt to rid himself of the booze, he makes himself throw up. Unexpectedly, Maria, who exactly resembles the virtual version of herself, shows up at the door and gives Adam a kiss. She's so perfect he can't believe what he's witnessing, but Maria wants to take things slowly. Her body is worn out from all the tests Donald had her undergo to ensure every part of her body was functioning properly. They even had her perform some nasty tasks to ensure other areas of her body were functioning as well. As Adam watches Maria take a shower, he becomes extremely envious and becomes even more irritated with her flirting. Adama escapes before things worsen because he momentarily sees Rena's face on Maria's corpse. Adam then searches Maria's luggage and discovers a little transparent chip and some protection. Adam attempts to play the guitar to divert his attention as he grows more irritated, but he is terrible at it. When Maria looks at the doll she used to be after taking a shower, she finds it unattractive. She tells Adam that the chip is named Eternal One and that it downloads a dying person's brain and transfers it to a virtual world when Adam confronts her about it. Adam finds it terrifying that a chip might hold a whole human being, while Maria gets philosophical and wonders what it really means to be human. Then Maria says she's going because she wants to get out there and experience the real thing, and the love she had for Adam was programmed. When Adam begs her to remain, Maria gives him a farewell kiss and walks away. Adam, feeling low and alone, begins to dance with the doll in an attempt to find some small solace. But as soon as Adam sees pictures in his head of Maria choosing Donald over him, he becomes so enraged that he grabs a knife and stabs the doll. When Adam feels like he's losing himself, he retreats to a corner to stew in his terrible emotions. In a nightmare, he asks the doctor if clones are really capable of feeling pain, and the doctor self-inflicts to demonstrate that she is also bleeding. He hears a knock and quickly gets up, grabbing Donald's rifle and opening the door to see his clone. Since clone Adam seems and acts more composed and at ease, it is evident that Rena made some adjustments. When Adam informs him of Rena's passing, the clone seems unfazed since he finds it appealing that a clone would take her place. He also promises that he cannot harm Adam because clones are incapable of using violence unless it is necessary for self-defense. Adam is shocked as the clone assesses the condition of his house and picks up the guitar to begin playing flawlessly. It indicates that Rena helped him become the creative person he had always desired to be. The clone also notes that whereas Adam had been a winner and difficult to please, Rena had been a wonderful wife. Adam forces the clone to remove his clothing out of curiosity about what else could have altered. They appear to be absolutely alike, with the exception that the clone is longer down below. When the clone inquires about Rena's passing, Adam finally snaps, screaming and accusing Donald of being the cause of his problems. 
The clone begins reading To Be or Not To Be, her favorite play from high school, to calm Adam down since he wants to track out Donald and murder him. Adam remembers the incident gradually and repeats it, sobbing as he acknowledges that the clone is indeed the ideal representation of himself. Clone Adam argues that he should embrace his new identity, but Adam loses it and retreats to his virtual reality chamber. As he explains that Earth would soon be empty and everyone's consciousness will be moved to the virtual world, the clone follows him. Adam points the rifle at the clone after realizing that he can't even be himself in the virtual world while it's alive. Adam is reminded that he is dying by the unnerved clone, who then forces him to take the medication in order to calm himself. Adam puts the rifle down and goes to take the medication, but then he remembers that the clone is controlling him and he raises the weapon once more. Finally, the clone's self-defense system is activated by this, and a battle breaks out. After much wrangling between the two guys over ownership of the pistol, the gun falls and the impact discharges it, shooting one of the Adams. It is up for interpretation as to who died, the genuine Adam or the clone. Adam then buries the second body and returns home to begin over. He gets out a family photo, puts the medicine away, then looks at both sets of clothes and decides on the traditional suit. When Rena's clone shows up at that same moment, the pair kisses and reunites right away. Rena is taken aback by his intense enthusiasm, and Adam remarks that her chest appears larger. Subsequently, the pair begin strategizing for their future together, even contemplating the possibility of cloning their child. They hear Adam's guitar melody being played by a chip that just activated. 